All right, I'm just gonna come out and say it. The Snapmaker U1 is the new king of multicolor 3D printing. I have spent the better part of the last few weeks 3D printing nonstop with this machine to see exactly what can this multi-tool head 3D printer do. And I have been nothing short of amazed of its print quality, print times, and the little to no waste that it produces creating these multi-color and multi-material 3D prints. And this isn't my review video for this production ready version of the Snapmaker U1 because this video is being sponsored by Snapmaker. But I am gonna be showing you all the things that I have printed with this so far, including some comparisons to some of the competitors that are out there, as well as giving some of my feedback on some of the issues that I've run into with this machine and just some things that I'd like to see changed, including one issue that I continually ran into that should be a rather easy thing to address. And for any of you that weren't aware, the U1 launched over on Kickstarter back in August, and by the time the campaign ended, there were over 20,000 individual backers for this multi-tool head 3D printer. It also raised $20 million in funding, making it the biggest 3D printer campaign in Kickstarter history. And I'm also excited to see that they've already started shipping out units to some of their backers, myself included. I'll be doing a full on review once my Kickstarter backed printer arrives. So what makes the U1 so unique that over 20,000 people decided to back this 3D printer campaign? Well, it all comes down to what Snapmaker's calling their snap swap system. And that's the four independent tool heads that help dang near eliminate some of the biggest pain points of multicolor 3D printing, mainly all the filament waste and the time it takes swapping between colors. There is almost zero purge waste compared to other multicolor 3D printers. You're really only ever seeing this when loading up a filament for the very first time or when actually starting up your print job. These multi-tool heads also also mean you're pretty much eliminating the issue of color bleeding that can occur when swapping between different colors on a single tool head 3D printer. The tool changes also occur incredibly fast, taking about 10 to 15 seconds from printing to priming to docking to swapping to the next tool head, back to priming, then printing. It's an incredibly quick process. It's also sporting a slightly larger build volume than most other Core XY 3D printers that are out there coming in at 270 by 270 by 270. It's also a Core XY designed 3D printer, but it's not fully enclosed like some of the other printers that are out there. There is an optional add-on where you can add an optional cover top so that you can print with additional materials like ABS or ASA. The printer is also running clipper and can be ran completely offline. There's no needing to connect to the cloud or any other kind of service if you don't want to. It also includes all the staples that you expect on a printer today, like auto bed leveling, a magnetic PEI plate, a 0.4 millimeter stainless steel nozzle, built-in camera for remote monitoring via the Snapmaker mobile app, and it also can record your time lapses for you. There's also two internal lights on the side to help illuminate whatever you're printing, as well as there's a little purge bin on the inside to capture the very small amount of waste that occurs with all of your prints. And I do mean a very small amount of purge material. There's also a window on the backside of the printer. I'm honestly not sure what the purpose of that is, but it does help bring in some additional light into your printer or just gives you an extra viewing angle for your prints. One other thing that I really like is that the bottom surface of the printer is mostly flat so you can easily remove any debris that might have fallen into the bottom of the printer. And when it comes to slicing up your prints, the U1 is running a version of Orca Slicer called Snapmaker Orca, or you could just run the standard version of Orca Slicer if you really wanted to. And you might be wondering about the pricing. Well, as of the time of recording this video over on the Snapmaker website, it's currently up for pre-order at $849. And I'm assuming it will be shipping at some point early next year once they have fulfilled all of the Kickstarter campaign orders. And at that price point, the Snapmaker U1 is probably the most affordable option when it comes to these multi-tool head systems. I also wanted to briefly mention the unboxing and setup experience. This thing was packaged so incredibly well. They did a really great job of making sure everything was secured in place, as well as protected with the door and all that good stuff that's included with the printer. The overall setup took about 15 to 20 minutes for me to get this thing from unbox to set up and calibrating. That includes installing the two side motors on the side of the printer, as well as the spool holders, installing the PTFE tubes, as well as the USB-C cables that help run the multi-tool heads. And speaking of, there is a specific process in mind when it comes to installing each of those individual tool heads, which you'll definitely want to be following along inside the beautiful manual 
manual. This is a great quick start guide that you really don't see with most 3D printers these days that walk you through in detail how to get this thing fully set up and running. The printer does come with four 500 kilogram rolls of filament to get you started. Those also have RFID tags built into them, which will automatically read the filament, indicating what color and material type it is once loaded onto the printer. And speaking of filament, let's take a look at some of the things that I printed off of the one so you can get a better idea of the print quality as well as just how little material this thing wastes. Now my printer only had one file loaded on it, which was this multicolor dragon that I think you've probably seen a bunch of other people printing off of this machine, and it's from IK3D. You can see here it produced very little purge waste whatsoever, as well as just this small prime tower of material compared to the actual multicolor print. I'm so used to seeing a huge amount of waste with multicolor 3D prints, which is why I don't entirely do it so often. So seeing something like this is just huge potential awesomeness. And since I already had my U1 loaded up with black, red, yellow, and white filament, I ended up finding this mouse file from Super Prints and got this printed and it took three hours and 38 minutes for it to complete. And the only real waste again is the prime tower throughout this entire print and it looks so good. This print turned out so nice and clean. This was all sliced in the Snapmaker Orca Slicer using supports with this and everything turned out incredible. Now I really wanted to see exactly how this would stack up to let's say the Prusa XL and the Bamboo Lab H2D. And the Prusa XL took four hours and four 48 minutes, the H2D took five hours and 44 minutes. And if I ran this on the P2S, it would have taken 12 hours and four minutes and a ton of wasted material. On the XL, there's some much more noticeable VFAs as well as some oozing that looks like it had occurred with the black filament that had soaked into some of the red areas of the print. The H2D print honestly does not look that great. There's definitely some rough areas on the back side of the print as well as again, some oozing that occurred when changing between the black and red filaments. And on the H2D, there was still a good amount of purged waste because this is a four color print. I just thought that this was a quick, awesome example of just how incredible this printer is and how little waste this thing produces. And if you've watched any of my content, you know that I'm all about printing big props, masks, helmets, you name it. So I found this Skeleton King helmet file from Little Up and it took just over 17 hours to print. Now, unfortunately, here's where we started to run into one of the primary issues that I've continually seen with a number of my prints. And it happens that the prime tower fell over midway through my print. Now I tried to salvage this by adding adding some magnets to the prime tower base, seeing if it would hold it in place and it sort of worked. But thankfully the print itself turned out still really good regardless of the prime tower falling over and a good amount of oozing occurring on the back side of the prints. What was also cool about this print is that it's not inherently a multicolor print because each of these parts can print individually in their own individual colors. However, I loaded them all up on one build plate and printed them at the same time. And it turned out so good, even with the prime tower falling over. Next, I really wanted to take advantage of the larger build volume that you can find on the U1 compared to some of the other 256 build volume printers that are out there. And I found this Wolverine Darth Maul mashup helmet file from Nico Industries and got that printed. This took 25 hours and 33 minutes. It was a four color print and it printed flawlessly, absolutely flawlessly. This is a great example of an all-in-one helmet print that I would have not been able to print on pretty much most of my other 3D printers. Or if I was able to print it, it would have produced so much waste compared to the no waste that this produced. Now, I kind of wish I printed this in TPU, so it was just a little bit more flexible. It's also could have probably been scaled up maybe a percent or two higher. My eyes are having a little trouble lining up in here. <laughs> I also printed these Galactic Armory card kits, again, trying to maximize the 270 build volume of the X and Y. And if anything, this could have used a little bit more cleanup with the print profiles or fine tuning of the temperatures, or maybe it was just a matter of drying out my filament to help reduce some of the stringing that I'm seeing on these prints. Now, one of my favorite prints that I've done on the U1 comes from a new designer that I've just recently found out about it is called Spicy Plastic, and it is their multicolor sugar skull. This turned out incredible. This is so incredibly clean looking and is just a fan fantastic example of how good of a multicolor 3D printer the U1 really is. 
And again, with most other multicolor 3D printers, you are gonna struggle with all of the wasted purge material going from all these changes from white to black to blue to this neon pink. There is just gonna be an extreme amount of waste that would have been generated on most other 3D printers when this didn't produce next to anything. And speaking of, here is all of the purged waste that I produced up until this point with all of these prints that I've shown you. That is, again, next to nothing. I then wanted to see how the printer would hold up against a print that I previously did on my P2S with a large multicolor, multi-tool changing print project that was gonna require a lot of color swaps. And that is this OWL controller stand by Hollow Props. Now, again, this is where I ran into the prime tower falling over towards the end of the print, causing some of the stringing that we see here on one side of the print. One other interesting thing about this particular print is this is a five color print job and this only has four tool heads. So in order to achieve the fifth color, I added a pause and color swap in the slice profile and was able to swap out this color for that fifth option. And this is again, a great example of not just how much time you're gonna save because of the multi-tool heads, but how much material you're gonna end up saving compared to some of the other machines that are out there that have multicolor capabilities. I also wanna try printing this multicolor torture test known as the bench bin and Unfortunately, I ran into multiple failures while trying to print this due to adhesion to the bed. And I was able to solve this by just adding a simple brim or mouse ears to the back section of the lid that continually kept failing due to the adhesion. I think just bumping up the overall bed temperature would have solved that or just again, adding a brim would have really helped keep this all in place. But the wheels move, all that stuff, everything flexes as it should. And it turned out pretty good for a multicolor print. Now I recently saw the 3D printing nerd print one of these and I had to try it for myself here on the U1 and that is printing these straps in TPU. This is Cookie CAD TPU and it prints in a big spiral pattern and it turned out so good. This machine, if anything, is really fantastic at printing TPU. I've found that it loads easily, it unloads easily and prints easily while working with TPU and I have just a ton of TPU strapping here that I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I also wanted to test out printing with PETG and found this Gambit staff from Marvel Rivals by Nico Industries. Printed this in black and gray TPU in a massive print and it turned out Great. I also printed the handles in PETG, but didn't have the purple that I was looking for. So I printed those individually in PLA and then just glued them on. But it was great being able to see all those staff parts printing in one go, thanks to adding a brim and upping the bed temperature. I then wanted to try mixing PLA and PETG. So I found this file from Mad Power and was able to print this with PETG supports with this PLA print. And as expected, everything worked flawlessly there. And one last file that I wanted to test out printing was this fluffy penguin print. It took five hours and 24 minutes in this black and white PLA combination. I also wanted to see how this would compare to printing over on the XL and the H2D. And it took five hours and 40 minutes on the XL and six hours and 17 minutes on the H2D. And after showing this print to my wife, her immediate feedback was, it's not so soft and fluffy. So I decided, hey, I have some TPU, so why not try and loading this up in black and white TPU and reprinting this? And it took six hours and 22 minutes to print this in TPU and it is not as squishy as I was hoping for, but it is definitely softer and a bit squishy compared to the standard hard PLA prints. I also wanted to give some additional information about the filament systems with these side mounted spool holders. One of my absolute favorite things about this printer is that it has these side mounted motors so that when you insert filament to load it into the printer, you're not having to manually feed it all the way into the extruder it automatically picks it up and starts feeding it in. There are some limitations to this. You can only do one spool at a time per side of the printer. I did test this out. You can do one on one side and one on the other side at the exact same time, and it will continually feed those in. And before you can fully load in the filament, you need to select what type of material and what color you're loading into the printer. 
And once you've inserted the filament in, it's not loaded all the way directly into each of those extruders. You have to go through the process of loading those up. There is a function on the touchscreen that you can interact with and select which of the tool heads you would like to load. I would like to see some kind of a select all function added to this menu to make that just ever so slightly easier. And it does take about seven minutes to automatically feed all the filament into each of the four print heads. And the unloading process is very similar. You can select which print heads you'd like to unload and the total process time for all four takes about five minutes. And again, I'd like to see some kind of select all function so that I can just quickly select all four to unload all of them. And yes, I did test if you're unloading on one side, you can load on the other side. I'd also like to see additional color options when selecting which colors that you're working with as well as just slightly better organization of how the colors are laid out. An example of this was I would love to see at least three different shades of purple or green or orange, you, you name it, I'm gonna need multiple shades because we're gonna be printing with lots of different color combinations. Now, no printer is perfect and there were a few things that I wanted to call out that I would like to see further improved on with the Snapmaker U1. The primary one being how prime towers are managed or individually set up there. I think there needs to be just a slightly larger brim applied to the default prime tower to make sure that it just stays in place and doesn't easily get knocked over. Either that or increase the overall bed temperatures. Those are two really simple things that could be done to help resolve the prime tower from falling over. Uh, also, one additional thing, I think the default location of the prime tower should be moved to the right front facing side of the printer here or just the right side of the printer so that the camera can more easily see it and detect if it's fallen over. Additionally, I'd like to see some further improvements made to the slicer, more print profiles, uh, more nozzle diameter options, you name it. We're gonna want lots of combination options and I'm sure they're already working on that, but just calling that out as something that I'd like to see additional profiles built out for this. One additional thing is my print time estimates were under what the actual print times were and it was by a good amount, by about an hour or more, depending on how large of a print job it was. Also, this is something more for you to be aware of is when you're unloading the filament, since it's no longer purging and cutting or anything like that, you're gonna end up with the tips that you're gonna need to manually cut off after you remove the spool from your printer. And again, I think the overall loading, unloading process could just use a little bit further refinement. It is so much easier to load up filament on this machine than some of the other multi-tool head machines that I've had access to. Uh, but I think it could be refined ever so slightly to make that process even better. If you have been hesitant or on the fence or not a big fan of multicolor and multi-material 3D printing just because of how much wasted material is produced, you are absolutely going to be thrilled with the new Snapmaker U1. There's obviously some things that could be further improved upon this, but right out of the gate here, this is a fantastic 3D printer that is producing some incredible results, and I can't wait to see where the Snapmaker team takes this. I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos just like this one here. And if you missed out on the Kickstarter campaign and are interested in pre-ordering the Snapmaker you want for yourself, there'll be links down below where you can check this out. And keep in mind, I will again, once I receive my Kickstarter backed campaign printer, I'll be doing a full on review once I get hands on with this. But so far, I am just thrilled with what I'm seeing with this machine and everything that it's capable of. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.